The episode begins with Sanjay giving a demonstration with a dummy at the master's new human slaughter factory. Since Ikors prefers a living subject, he grabs Sanjay's assistant and hangs him up on the assembly line. The assistant tries to free himself until his blood is harvested. However, he can't be incinerated as the incinerator isn't working yet. Ikors demands Sanjay to make improvements, considering that the real time to harvest human blood and incinerate them was longer than the projections. In the following scene, Gus takes Angel, who was injured during the Battle of Central Park, to the Palmer Freedom Center. Angel asks Gus to leave and go to a safer place. However, Gus doesn't want to leave Angel alone. In a flashback of New York, 1993, we see that Gus and his mother, Manita, are victims of his father's physical assault. After multiple incidents of abuse, Manita's brothers take the lead and kill Gus's father. Afterwards, Manita's brothers tell Gus to grow up and act mature because he is now the man of the house. Since Gus's father isn't coming back, the uncles ask him to take care of his mother. Back in the present, Satrakian and Vasily meet Palmer, who looks more invigorated than ever after a dose of the white. Palmer supplies the information about a man, Cyrus Minnow, in charge of the shipment from Egypt carrying cargo of something valuable to the master. After procuring the information, Satrakian and Vasily head back to their residence and inform Quinlan about it. Since Satrakian suspects the cargo must of the remaining three ancients, he asks Quinlan to talk to the other ancients at their headquarters and make them aware. While Quinlan leaves for the ancients' headquarters, Satrakian and Vasily go after Cyrus. Meanwhile Ephraim and Dutch are busy listening to Flight 753 Seconds Black Box. Suddenly, a loud, high-pitched squealing starts blasting through the speakers, shaking the whole room and strongly affecting Dutch, who passes out before F can pull the plug. After a while Dutch wakes up and realizes they might have the master's full recording that could be helpful in disrupting his communications with his minions. As Dutch feels nauseous and throws up, she decides to rest, holding their plan for a while. Later when Efren comes to her aid with soup, they start flirting with each other and make out. Elsewhere, Satrakian and Vasily go to Cyrus's apartment and coerce him to show them the ship's cargo. Cyrus leads them to a huge building. While being led to the cargo, Satrakian and Vasily come across the human slaughter factory. Supervised by Eichhorst and funded by Palmer's Stoneheart organization, Satrakian, who is not pleased to discover it, slaps Cyrus. Since finding the cargo is more important than the slaughterhouse for the moment, they head outside. Unfortunately, a gunfight ensues as they spot Eichhorst and Sanjay, who manage to take the cargo and drive away with it in a truck. In the next scene, Gus returns home while Angel is being treated at the hospital. After Gus heads out to get some supplies, Angel arrives from the hospital, takes an aspirin and sleeps on the couch, waiting for Gus. Angel wakes up to find Gus's vampire mother in front of him. As she lashes out her tentacle to attack Angel, Gus arrives right on time and shoots a silver bullet in her head. Since Gus is guilty for shooting at his vampire mother, he decides to leave the city with Angel to a safer place. In a flashback, Gus visits his bartender friend and asks him if he knows of any side job. Shivo hands Gus a business card of Eichhorst, who came in the bar recently wanting someone to work at the airport. In the present, Quinlan meets the ancients and asks them to fight for their survival. Meanwhile, Eichhorst and numerous vampires arrive at the scene after being able to locate the ancients. The master speaks through Eichhorst, sharing his dismay of the unexploited potential of the ancients. Soon a battle starts, prompting the ancients to finally get down and fight. Quinlan, the paratrooper vampires, and the ancients fight together to take down the hordes of vampires. While the others fight, Eichhorst leaves a briefcase bomb at the location and swoops out. As soon as Eichhorst steps out, he detonates the bomb and watches the area crumble to the ground. At the command center, following the brutal loss at the Central Park, Feraldo tries to rally her men and women with a new plan. Despite constant interruptions by a skeptical officer who says they should head for the mountains. However, Feraldo refuses to abandon her city, which she has sworn to protect. The NYPD pulls out, with only five officers in Feraldo's team. Afterwards, she too decides to leave the town along with the five officers. Elsewhere, a rejuvenated Palmer meets Bob, a Stoneheart employee who probably wouldn't mind some white for himself since he's in a wheelchair. Since Sanjay informed that he was taking over the company due to Palmer's poor health, Bob is surprised to see Palmer. Being a loyal employee of Palmer, Bob agrees to help him find the mysterious cargo from the ship. During a flashback of Manhattan, 1962, Palmer meets his father, O'Neill, a successful businessman. It is revealed that Palmer was his illegitimate child. 
Palmer hopes the guilt over his dad's absentee parenting will help him get a job at O'Neill's Industries. But O'Neill doesn't oblige, mainly because of Palmer's poor health. Instead, he gives his illegitimate son a check for $10,000, which he says fulfills whatever obligation he has. In the present, Vasily comes to his place to warn Dutch and Ephraim that the city only has a few days until the vampires take complete control of it. After Feraldo and police have abandoned the city, Vasily asks Dutch to come with him to a safer place. However, Dutch chooses to stay with Ephraim and help him as they are very close to disrupting the master's signal. Later, Ephraim and Dutch go hunting in the tunnels, where they lure a feeler into a trap. They take the feeler into their lab to open it up, where they discover its communication center is double that of a regular vampire, only making them more confident in their plans. Elsewhere, Palmer's employee, Bob, finds out the location of the cargo and informs Palmer. Soon, Palmer, his head of security, Duncan and a few associates are able to infiltrate the building, where Sanjay is protecting the box. After discovering the box with a suitcase containing nuclear bomb, Palmer decides to take it with him. Another flashback of 1992, a wheelchair inhabiting Palmer visits his father at a nursing home. Palmer is there to gloat about his achievements to his not-so-responsible father. He explains how he used the $10,000 check given by his father 30 years ago to create his own empire so he's here to repay the debt. Palmer hands the check to his father stating it to fulfill whatever obligations Palmer has to him. O'Neill angrily rips up the check, only to become even more infuriated when Palmer reveals he has purchased O'Neill Industries and intends to shut it down. And whatever remains, Palmer is going to name it Stoneheart in honor of his father, who never cared and loved Palmer and his mother. However, Palmer's father demeans Palmer saying he has wasted his life to beat him and not look after his poor health. He further states he will outlive Palmer and dance on his grave. Back in the present, while Feraldo is leaving the city with her few remaining officers, they are suddenly ambushed by the vampires. Meanwhile, Gus and Angel stumble upon the scene. While Gus insists they should leave as soon as possible, Angel is determined to save the group. So the duo helps Feraldo and her officers to escape, but not for long. As they try to cross the bridge, they indulge in a battle with the vampires. Unfortunately, a vampire stings, infecting Angel and a vampire worm slithers inside Feraldo's eyes. Gus is devastated and refuses to leave Angel. However, the latter asks Gus to escape, throwing him off the truck. Knowing they're not going to make it, Angel, Feraldo, and her officers continue to fight off the vampires. Just as Gus makes it to the fence, he looks back as an explosion kills all Angel. Feraldo and her men. In the meantime, Ephraim and Dutch test their device on some vampires, who stop responding the minute it's turned on, and they slaughter the vampires easily. Afterwards, the duo take the device and their recording of the test run to show it to Satrakian and Vasily. Although Ephraim and Dutch think the device will help to catch the master and seal him in a silver box, Vasily doesn't want Ephraim to be a part of the mission since he betrayed them earlier. Also it seems like Vasily is jealous of Dutch being close to Ephraim. The two men engage in a fight, until Quinlan arrives, who luckily escaped alive from the nuclear blast, and reveals that the ancients are dead. At the Stoneheart, Palmer and Duncan make it back home with the briefcase nuclear bomb, and begin to prepare for Ikorce to arrive at any moment. Back in a flashback of Paris in 2002, Palmer meets Eichhorst and accepts the master's offer that includes an immune body with the white and an equal partnership. Eichhorst further assures Palmer that the master will never betray him. In the present, Eichhorst shows up to confront Palmer, who is acting as ill and bedridden, and take the briefcase bomb. In exchange for the return of the nuclear bomb, Palmer wants the master to fulfill his promise. However, Eichhorst threatens Palmer to turn him and have control over his memories finding out the location of the nuclear briefcase bomb. Before Eichhorst manages to attack, Palmer throws off his blanket to reveal a shotgun filled with silver bullets and shoots Eichhorst multiple times. Meanwhile, Duncan and his associates arrive and shoot Eichhorst, making him critically injured. Eichhorst barely makes it to the elevator, falling through the shaft and escaping. Instead of finding Eichhorst, Palmer rushes to meet Satrakian since the master is now aware of everything. Later, when Palmer meets Satrakian he suggests Satrakian to assemble his team in order to take the master down. Since Eichhorst is on the verge of dying, Palmer believes the master will be compelled to unhide himself. Taking this opportunity, Palmer convinces Satrakian to end the game once and for all. In the following scene, Eichhorst stumbles down the streets, barely able to stand after the silver bullets. Upon passing out, two humans come across him 
As they discover what he is, they prepare to cut off his head. Meanwhile, a pair of vampire Navy SEALs kill the humans and carry injured Icorse to safety. Elsewhere, Zack plays in the abandoned streets with his pet feeler. A concerned man sees Zack alone and offers to take him to safety. After the man sees the feeler, he points the gun at it until it attacks him after Zack's approval. Afterwards, Zack is worried Kelly will be mad at him, but Kelly is proud. She reveals the master has a great plan for Zack when he is curious about not being turned yet. In the meantime, Satrakian and group plan to use Ephraim and Dutch device to trap and incapacitate the master and force him inside the box where the silver will trap him for eternity, and they will sail out to the North Atlantic and sink him. At the Stoneheart building, two vampire SEALs shoot Palmer's entire security team. One of the vampires turns out to be the master in his latest form. In order to find about the nuclear bomb, the master puts soil and vomits a flood of vampire worms and his white in Palmer's mouth, and they both collapse. Soon, Palmer wakes up and now is the master's new form. Next, a dying Eichhorst is brought to see the master in Palmer's office. The master explains why taking Palmer's form was essential. In order to save his most loyal associate, the master drops his white in Eichhorst's multiple bullet holes, enabling him to rise again to normal. Later that day, Eichhorst gives Kelly and Zack a tutorial on nuclear bomb. He then heads off to a meeting leaving the detonator to Kelly. Eichhorst meets Sanjay, who is given the task of putting the suitcase in the Statue of Liberty. Meanwhile, Satrakian and the group arrive at Stoneheart. Satrakian and Ephraim head to meet Palmer at his office, where Satrakina quickly notices something is off with Palmer. However, when he starts to taunt Satrakian and praise Zack, they realize it's the master. A battle starts and the master overpowers them. Ephraim is wounded and Vasily enters to the rescue. But the master beats him too because Dutch's communication blocker is not working. Just when Quinlan arrives at the scene and strikes the master, Dutch is also finally able to run the device, blocking the master's communication with his minions. Taking the advantage, Quinlan pushes the master and traps him in the box bound with silver and lead. The group is excited to take down the master. However, Satrakian insists on dumping the box in the ocean as soon as possible. While Ephraim stays back because of his wound, the rest go to sink the box in the North Atlantic. After the master is trapped, Eichhorst and Kelly can't hear him, and they don't know what to do. Kelly almost feeds on Zack, changing her mind only when he convinces her to find the master. Later, Ephraim stitches his wound and gets an unexpected visit from Kelly and Zack. Immediately Kelly rushes at Ephraim and the two start to fight, while Zack shouts at them to stop. In his defense, Ephraim stabs a silver dagger in Kelly's neck, killing her. As Ephraim tries to console Zack that he is safe, and everything is over. Zack being a reckless kid, pulls out the detonator of the nuclear bomb and presses the button as he says he hates Ephraim for killing his mother. The explosion has an instant and brutal effect, where everyone is knocked over. Even worse, the eruption sets the master free, and he escapes from the box. With the whole city now deserted and most people injured, Quinlan, Satrakian, Dutch and Vasily decide to get to safety to avoid radiation poisoning before searching for the master. At the end, Zack comes out on the street safely and meets Eichhorst, who praises Zack and thanks him for whatever he did. Eventually Ephraim also makes it outside, but Zack is already gone. He stares up to the sky, which goes dark as the bomb smoke covers the sun. Meanwhile, thousands of vampires flood the streets. Subscribe and hit that like button to help our channel grow. Turn on the notifications so you won't miss any of our new videos. Thanks for watching.